Live Nation is at it again, gang. They've canceled Sick New World for unforeseen circumstances, and that seems hella sketch to me. So, the word of the day today is gonna be sketchy. Sick New World was going to be a gigantic one day rock and heavy music fest set to take place in Las Vegas, in the same kind of parking lot that When We Were Young takes place in. It was gonna feature so many hyped up reunions of these rock bands that haven't been around since the 90s. Also, it boasted these massive headliners like Linkin Park and Metallica. And shortly after announcing this gigantic tour, Live Nation rug pulled and canceled the entire event. And today, we're gonna get into all of that drama, but before we do, hey, hi, hello, my name is Dan Frampton, and this is my YouTube channel, but you already know that. If you like, comment, and subscribe within the first three hours, you will be in three hour gang, and I will reply. That is a Frampton guarantee. And before we get going, I'm trying to grow my blue sky over here. So, Dan Frampton, all one word, the O's a zero on blue sky if you're there. And it wasn't that long ago, it was October 5th, that Sick New World was announced and it is a massive lineup. I don't know how you're gonna have this many bands play in one single solitary day, but that was the plan. The people on my side of the internet were most looking forward to the reunion of Acid Bath. I had so many DMs, I had so many messages being like, have you heard about the Acid Bath reunion? And I was like, whoa, what's going on? And that's how I learned about Sick New World. So the hype of these reunions really was driving the conversation a little bit, at least on my side of the internet. But it was only a few short days ago that Sick New World was like, nah, uh this stuff ain't happening. And I have a couple sources that we're gonna go to to fill in the gaps of this story. So what could be going on? You had Metallica, you had Linkin Park, you had all of these reunions going on, people are so stoked, so why on earth would you cancel such a massive festival? Turning to Brooklyn Vegan first, it says, The festival was the first show that the Mike Patton-led supergroup Tomahawk had announced in over a decade, and the band's Trevor Dunn, also of Mr. Bungle, revealed the cancellation ahead of the official announcement in an interview with The Vinyl Guide. Dunn's comments appear to be edited out of the episode, but he is reported to have said, I'm probably not supposed to talk about this, but it's not happening. It'll come out soon in the wash, but basically the festival is not happening. We had a whole tour. We had a two week thing built around that, which we can't do now because financially it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, that's not happening. And jumping back out of the article right now, I find that so disheartening to read. Because yeah, bands would build things around this festival if they were promised a payday that was gonna fund a tour. But now the entire tour needs to be canceled along with the festival. So now that's just an entire revenue stream just ripped away from them that they thought was going to be there. So now you got to replan your entire year financially. That sucks so much, Live Nation. Sick New World was also the first show that Acid Bath announced since their 1997 breakup. The hype was real. The lineup was crazy. A mix of modern hardcore bands like Scowl and Terror, mixed with old hardcore bands like Refuse, New Metal like Orgy, Static X, and Kitty. We got Glassjaw, Flaming Lips, Cannibal Corpse, and Meshuggah on the same bill. The Hives and Under Oath are listed here together. This was gonna be an insane show. And then what is this, the Melvins? Crazy, absolutely crazy lineup, just ripped away from everybody. And it's not like you're gonna be able to go there and see all of these bands anyway. <laughs> Napalm Death, for Christ's sake. And it was supposed to be headlined by Metallica and Linkin Park. How did these tickets not sell? Well, I wonder. There's probably a good couple reasons why Live Nation canceled for unforeseen circumstances, and I'm thinking it's because tickets didn't sell. But before I die on that hill, let's go to Lamb Goat for their reporting, and it says, The festival, known for its massive lineups of over 50 plus heavy and alternative rock acts, struggled to navigate a transition in management after the departure of its creator, Jeffrey Schumann, earlier this year. 
After Live Nation handed its reins to C3 and veteran buyer Houston Powell, the original lineup was trimmed, but the financial strain remained. So it really does seem like there's a couple factors at play that led to them canceling this festival. But there are a couple other points down here that we will be getting into, but I think the transfer of power in management can't be overlooked either. And when you just look up C3 Presents reviews really quickly on Google and don't do any real research, it looks like working for the company is really good, but going to their shows isn't really good. But again, I'm not doing a deep dive on that specifically. That's just what a quick Google search translates to the consumer. And when management switches over in just a restaurant or whatever, the changes can be astronomical. And that's not really a big brained observation or anything. It's like, oh, you had a smarter person run the business? Of course the business did better. Oh, you had a dumber person, a lazier person, a less competent person run the business and it didn't do as good? Oh, that is so shocking. And another factor here that can't be looked over is when the heart and soul leaves a project, the heart and soul tends to leave the project forever. So when the creator of the thing, Jeffrey Schumann, is piecing out on everything, the other people putting this thing together aren't going to have the same emotional, personal attachment to the festival that its creator just inherently would. It just turns it purely into a corporate greed kind of thing. But this article goes on to include four more key factors, so let's dive into those while we're here. Key factors included enormous artist guarantees. Reports suggest Metallica and Linkin Park were each set to earn five million dollars necessitating a near sellout event. Well that's absolutely wild and also very telling of a not sellout event. The next point, oh, lagging ticket sales. Only about 20,000 of the festival's 60,000 capacity were sold, far short of what needs to break even. Ah, so it seems like, yeah, they got a little bit nervous and we're like, oh God, there's no way we're going to sell these tickets when maybe they could have just done like a better job promoting it or whatever. Point number four. Price barrier. General admission tickets were set at $472. Okay, that's gonna do it. And VIP packages climbing to $1873. Pricing many fans out. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll also do it. Rock and roll fans aren't typically the most rich people out there. And even though people do have money to be throwing at festivals and at concerts and all that sort of thing going to shows, $472 for a general admission ticket to a one-day festival where you're not going to be able to see even a fraction of those bands is absolutely crazy. And what would justify the $1,800 VIP ticket? No idea. But I think they're just pricing it so high because, oh my God, we need to pay $10 million just to the headlining acts. Point number four, alternative heavy lineup. While the festival maintained its focus on heavy rock, some fans pointed out the inclusion of alternative acts like AFI, Flaming Lips, and 311 as a shift from the original draw. Okay, so the bands just weren't heavy enough for you. I get it. But I think that's kind of cool to put in like all of those kinds of acts, but whatever. So maybe that could have been a contributing factor. But I will say the people going there for Mastodon aren't going to be the same people going for AFI. That's for sure. And after announcing the decision to cancel the event, Live Nation expressed regret stating, despite our best efforts, we've encountered unforeseen circumstances that we were unable to overcome for next year's show. We extend a heartfelt thanks to all the dedicated SNW fans who had made plans to join us for another cultural celebration of hard rock, goth, alternative, and heavy music. Unforeseen circumstances. I don't know if that's true. I think if you're going into it, selling tickets at $500 a pop in an oversaturated lineup and paying $10 million to your headliners, I think those circumstances are very much foreseen. I don't think you need to be the second coming of Nostradamus to be able to see that. But after Live Nation pulled the rug, Sick New World of course had to come out with their update over here as well. It is with great disappointment that we announce that Sick New World will no longer take place in Las Vegas on April 12th, 2025. Despite our best efforts, we've encountered unforeseen circumstances that we're unable to overcome for next year's show. We extend our heart, blah, 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 the exact same thing, the exact same thing, but this time it has like a graphic, blah, 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 blah. Live Nation just can't seem to get anything right these days. What are these prices? What are these logistics? The bottom is completely falling out of your operation. Five million dollars to get Linkin Park? Five million dollars to get Metallica? That's 
that's crazy. Absolutely horrible job, Live Nation. You're totally cooked. And to me, it's really sad to see this happen because the lineup looked amazing. It really did feel like the culture was healing and growing and everything was coming together. Maybe tribalism could take a night off for one day. This was just too much to ask for though, I guess. Unrealistic. Well, that's the sick new world drama. I've been Dan Frampton. Thank you for watching.